but first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Unbiased Sports Family. Uh, thanks uh, everyone from the community for uh, supporting my channel. And I want to give a shout out to Tyrone Magnus. Um, you know, I know, you know, he's been working hard. I was supposed to watch the fight with Tyrone Magnus, but as you guys know, man, he's blowing up. Um, he's uh, working on some stuff for Vengeance. So, you know, by the time he got back, it was again too late for him. So he, I'm sure he was tired too. So I just told him just get some rest. You know, maybe on the next uh, UFC, maybe 206. So, all right, man, keep up the great work, bro. Keep it up, Tyrone, man. See you on the big screen, buddy. Maybe on, on the UFC 206. We'll probably watch that together. But anyways, guys, let's get uh, get over with the review right now with UFC 205. Man, let me tell you guys something. Let's start with the other uh, the undercard fights first, man. Um, let's talk about Khabib uh, versus Michael Johnson. Man. Let me tell you, talk about a mauling. Man, he mauled the mess out of Michael Johnson. Man, pretty much, he got him down to the ground. But let me tell you guys something. Uh, Michael Johnson rocked Khabib. I mean, rocked him. He felt it. You see his leg give out too, by the way. So not saying Khabib, um, you, know, you know, could take a shot. Because he did take a shot. He recovered from it. And end up mauling Michael Johnson. You know, pretty much, you know... Uh, I guess uh, uh, the ref was about to stop it, telling uh, Michael Johnson's corners, telling Rashad Evans, I'm about to stop it if he can't defend himself. And, you know, pretty much the whole thing was Khabib, he's uh, uh, on a different type of level of wrestling. Man, he pretty much mauled Michael Johnson. Um, you know, you can't take anything away from Michael Johnson, man. He was fast, he was moving, he was cutting angles, throwing punches. Uh, it's just that, you know, Khabib got the hold of him and just pretty much just... <laughs> uh, just Hung on, dragged him down, and just pretty much ground and pound him the whole time. And this guy is a wrestler. Man, this guy is a sambo fighter. And this guy's strength is on a different level for wrestlers, man. Um, you know, this guy, he's a beast, dude, on the ground. Uh, but anyways, you know, I still give hats off to Michael Johnson, man. He had heart in there. He didn't want to give up. He kept fighting through it. You know, unfortunately, the ref had to call it. That was it. Pretty much stoppage. So... Let's get down to the other fight. Frankie Edgar versus, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Lil Heaven Steven, man. That was a great fight, man. But you could tell uh, Stevens was big, man, for uh, Frankie Edgar. Um, you could just see the size difference in the octagon, man, when he was fighting Frankie Edgar, man. Frankie Edgar looked really small. And pretty much, and, and you know what? It, Frankie Edgar got kicked in the face. And he got rocked. Um, you know, pretty much, you know, that's when uh, Steven was trying to push, you know, trying to put him away, but he couldn't. But let me tell you guys something, man. The durability of Frankie Edgar is crazy. You see how he survived that, man? He's never been finished. He's never been uh, submitted. You know, he's never been KO'd either, man. Like I said, the durability of Frankie Edgar is ridiculous. Um, when it comes down to it, you know, he has a heart of the champ, and he was the champ for 155. Um, when it comes down to it, like I said, Frankie Edgar, man, you know, I always root for him, man, because he's the little guy, you know, he's, my, you know, got to represent Jersey, man, Tom's River. Um, but anyways, yeah, I thought that was a good fight, um, you know, uh, you know, Frankie Edgar won by unanimous decision, and I thought he did great, you know, he was, he was doing his thing, implementing, and, you know, you could tell his wrestling game's on point. Um, because uh, Stevens was having a hard time, um, you know, especially when Frankie, you know, grabbed a hold of him. He's relentless. He kept trying to get him down. Kind of tired him out, too. Um, definitely, man, that was a great fight. Uh, congrats to Frankie Edgar there. All right, now let's get down to the women. Um, you know, uh, uh, Joanna versus Carolina, man. That was a crazy fight, man. Um, you know, the, pretty much Joanna dominated the first three rounds. Uh, then, you know, Carolina started picking up with a striking game. Um, pretty much caught her with the overhand right. And pretty much, you know, it caught her right on the button, right on the nose. And you could tell that you, Joanna got stunned. And Carolina was putting on pressure. You know, I, I would like to see that rematch. Um, just because two technical Muay Thai strikers was going at it. And you could just tell Joanna was on a different level with striking with her leg kicks. And, you know, just cutting the angles and stuff and Carolina was having a hard time with her range and trying to find 
um, you know, her game plan trying to implement it too. But I think if it, there is a rematch, um, I think it's going to be a little bit different. I think now she felt it and now I think it's going to be uh, even more exciting to be honest with you. But congrats to uh, the champ, you know, retaining that belt. You know, I, I saw it that way too. I saw Joanna winning it. But, it, you know, I give Carolina um, some credit too because she stood in there and she kept going and she kept pushing forward too. And you see she wasn't, you know, falling back or... Uh, you know, uh, moving backwards, she kept moving forward the whole time. So, you know, congrats to her, man. That was a great fight for her. Uh, she did her best. And I think on the next rematch, I think it's going to be even closer. All right, now let's get down to uh, Steven Wonderboy versus Tyron Woodley. Wow. All I got to say is wow. Dude, let me tell you something. What I learned from Steven Wonderboy, he has heart, guys. Damn, he got rocked hard. And I told you guys with Tyron, he know how to cover distance with those punches. And that's what happens. He covered that distance and Tyron was finding his range. And it, it's so hard to time uh, um, somebody like Stephen Wonderboy Thompson just because he's so unorthodox. And like I said, he reminds me of Le Leota Machida, but better. And he was cutting angles, he was moving, his hands are always down. It's like uh, watching a, 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 a cobra. You know what I mean? That's how his striking was. He's ducking, you know, he's slipping in and out, cutting angles. Um, you know, definitely, you know, I got to give him credit, man. I thought he was out, man. And Tyron had him in a deep rear uh, um, uh, guillotine chokehold. He couldn't finish him, man. And he just pretty much put on the pressure. He pretty much gassed out his arms. That was insane, man. And you know what? You know, that to me, that, that shows a lot. For Steven Wonderboy Thompson, he weathered that storm from uh, Tyron Woodley. Man, he you know he has some durability on him. And Tyron, man, and like I said, if he didn't get that flurry in that round and trying to put him out, I thought it was even uh, to me to be honest with you because uh, you know Wonderboy was just pretty much going at it with his striking and just you know out striking him. And even though Tyron was moving forward, you know he's getting you know shots here and there, but you know on on you know. On strike, how many strike counts? I think Wonder Boy was out striking him, and he just was doing a lot more work than Tyron. Uh, but definitely, you know, Tyron won that fight just because he knocked him down, almost put him out, and almost finished him. But like I said, I got to give credit to Steven Wonder Boy, man. He has heart. And Tyron, I voted, you know, I knew he was going to win, but, um, you know, I learned something by Steven uh, Wonder Boy, man, just having that heart in there. Uh, congrats to. Uh, Steven Wonderboy Thompson for a great fight and putting on an exciting uh, show for us for us fans and also for Tyron congrats champ I knew you was gonna take this one your first title defense so we'll see who's next for you now let's get in down to the main event guys well actually you know what let's not even go to the main event let's talk about uh, Chris Weidman and Yoel Romero holy shit that's all I gotta say man that was crazy um, you know, you just could tell the physicality piece, um, you know, like what I said, you know, physicality, uh, Yoel Romero was a bigger guy, but, you know, uh, you know, the, the height, uh, Weidman had the advantage, um, you know, I thought Weidman was uh, outstriking him in the beginning, was kind of confusing him, and, you know, trying to take him down to the ground, and trying to confuse him, what he's doing, he's like mix, mixing his striking game, and trying to force him uh, to be on the all, uh, defense, where Chris Weidman was trying to take down an Olympic wrestler, so you try to when you're fighting an Olympic wrestler like that, you gotta try to outsmart him. So you want to confuse him with your strikes, and you try to hit for a single or double, you know, single or double leg takedown. If not, cutting the angle and side sweeping. You know what I mean? But you guys seen Yoel Romero when he got Chris Weidman down the first time. He did the he pretty much grabbed Weidman, pulled him forward, and kind of sweeped him with the lower sweep right on my uh, I guess on the ankle piece, if not right by the foot. That was crazy, man. Um, that was a great takedown. I saw that. I was like, I said, wow. Somebody to do that to Chris Wyman. Uh, you know, that's something, you know, uh, somebody has some great skills in wrestling. And that just goes to show you guys, you have great wrestlers and you got excellent wrestler. Then you have Olympic wrestler. And that's what Yoel Romero is, man. He was an Olympic team, uh, a medalist for Cuba. And, but definitely, man, striking game wise, this guy's a monster, man. He's a scary 185er. Man, you see when he did that flying knee and just, I've never seen Chris Weidman get hit that bad and pretty much knocked him down and just pretty much it was over. Man, he had a, he had a big gash in the side of his head. It was like bleeding. 
Oh man, you know I, I you know I like Chris Weidman. He's one of my uh, my favorite fighters. As much as he had so much hate on him when he beat Anderson Silva twice, I had to constantly uh, defend him. Um, you know, just overall, you know, uh, you know, old lion out, new lion coming in, and that's pretty much what it was. Yes, you know, Anderson Silva was is and still will be the greatest of all time, to be honest with you. But sometimes age play a factor. You know, if you guys see my review on that. Um, you know, I, I like Chris Weidman, you know, um, I thought he's a he's stand up person. He's a great guy too when he does all his interview. Um, you know, he's not, you know, he's not cocky at all. You know, I, that's what I like about him. You know, he's very professional. Um, but at the same time, I hate to see him lose like that, especially in New York City and Madison Square Garden is in his backyard. But, you know, uh, you know, uh, he's only going to get better. You know, he's going to come back stronger in the next fight. Uh, Yoel, Mer uh, Yoel Romero, congrats on that fight, man. Uh, dude, that was some serious stuff, buddy. Yeah, congrats, Yoel. All right, um, to the main event, man. Dude, let me tell you, I have to apologize to uh, Mystic Mac, uh, to Conor McGregor. Man, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'll never, uh, you know, go against you again. Dude, let me tell you, this guy's legit. You know, the hype train's for real, guys. Uh, for somebody to do that to uh, Eddie Alvarez, I'm not saying he's the best at it, but for somebody to come up in weight class from 145 to 155, even he was fighting in a different organization at 155. He uh, McGregor did have two belts too, by the way. But we're talking about the biggest and the best organization to fight, so you're only fighting the best. The way how he took out Eddie Alvarez and just pretty much outstriked him and keep con uh, keep hitting him with that straight left. That did he did it effortlessly, effortlessly, and just pretty much took out Eddie Alvarez just like that, man. Um, you know, Eddie Alvarez's game plan was to either like strike with him and trying to use his wrestling, but guys, that only works if Eddie Alvarez. Um, well, I shouldn't say Eddie Alvarez. If Connor was using leg kicks, guys, you know, if you ever fought a wrestler, because I did train with a few wrestlers back in my day, um, wrestlers are really good trying to take you down when you start throwing those leg kicks and that's what they're hoping you you know hoping for you to do is to throw those leg kicks um so that way they could take you either grab you by a single and if not you know kind of sidestep and try to get you by your hip and try to come across so it's almost like a sidestep takedown um you know uh, uh, yeah but definitely man the game plan for Eddie Alvarez that wasn't working um you know I wish he would have changed his game plan because you know what you know it's I know it's easier than said than done guys He's fighting an elite striker, and you know, like what I said, man, I gotta apologize because I thought Eddie Alvarez was gonna manhandle, you know, Conor McGregor just because Chad Mendes pretty much did that to Conor, uh, you know, before Conor knocked him out. You know, it just looked like Chad Mendes just gassed out. But in this case, you know, he's you know a true 155er, and you know he didn't have to cut a lot of weight to make 155. So this is his best weight class. Um, you know, that left hand was there for him. And let me tell you guys, like, he wasn't even throwing leg kicks. The reason why, because he knew he was fighting a wrestler. Because if a wrestler grabs your leg, he's going to try to time you. And that's what Eddie was banking on to get him down to the ground. Um, you know, and you know what it goes to show me too? Conor McGregor's takedown defenses. Uh, he's been working on it a lot. It showed you. Eddie couldn't even take him down when he got him up against the fence. So, like what I said, you know, you know, Conor McGregor, you could love him. You could hate him. You could despise him. You could talk shit about him, but God, you guys gotta give him credit when credit is due, man. Um, for him to have two belts simultaneously, you know, and he could either still, I don't know what, what UFC is gonna do, either gonna get, you know, kind of strip him of the 145 pound belt, or he wants to continue to defend both belts. If he does that, that's crazy. But to have one person, he just made UFC history. One person holding two belts simultaneously without giving it up either. So, Mystic Mac, you are the man. Um, you know, I'll never bet against you. If you fight Khabib, I think you're going to knock him out too because Michael Johnson just showed that he hit him once and pretty much tagged him. It wobbled him. I definitely think you could knock him out probably second or third round, Mystic Mac. Conor McGregor, like I said, I apologize. Dude, congrats, champ. Man, you got two belts on you. And like I said, man, I'll never bet against you again, ever. But uh, definitely, guys, that's my review, uh, actually my recap on UFC 205. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Hey, and guys, this is just my opinion. Don't be mad, you know what I mean? You know, it's just my opinion, guys, and this is what I saw. This is what I see. Um, you know, I train, too, as well. Guys, like I said, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy my recap. 
And as always, you know, hit the like and subscribe button. And, you know, as always, thanks for watching, guys. And stay tuned for the next uh, fight review and recap for UFC 206. If not, maybe on the next UFC fight night. So, all right, guys, later. Blah, 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 blah.